So this is uh, joint with Alex Rhys Jones and Chloe Tergiman. And as you can see from the title, what we're thinking about here is correlation neglect in the context of a particular search problem. Uh, this is the case of students searching from, for schools, but I hope you can all see uh, during the talk that this is just an example of a broader issue. So historically, people were thought to be good uh, intuitive statisticians. But in the early 70s, evidence began to accumulate that there are certain issues that humans struggle with. And one of these issues is correlation. So there are evidence that many experimental subjects treat statistically correlated events as if they're independent. And our goal in this project is to study this behavior and understand its consequences in the domain of school choice. <clears throat> so to understand where correlation can emerge in school choice, a simple example can be useful. Imagine that there are three schools available, but you can only apply to two, maybe because these are the rules introduced by the school district. Admissions are going to be determined solely by a uniform random draw, but you don't know the realization of this draw when you need to apply. This can be, for example, not random, but the score in a test that you didn't take yet or you didn't get its result yet. Now, each school has their own admission requirement, a threshold of score or a lottery number that you need to surpass in order to be admitted. In this example, the good school has a, thre has a threshold of 50. The middle school requires 45 in order to be admitted. And the bad school would accept anybody, only that you need to apply in order to be admitted. We're particularly interested in two application strategies the aggressive strategy of applying to good and middle, and the diversified strategy of applying to good and bad. Now, in this audience, it may be transparent that by applying using the aggressive strategy, a student is highly unlikely to be accepted to the, or to be placed in the middle school. And the reason is that if the student's score is high enough to be admitted to the good school, he's going to go there anyway. But if his score is not sufficiently high, is lower than 50, he's highly unlikely to get a score that is high enough to suffice to be admitted to the middle school. In fact, as you can see in red, the trade-off the two strategies introduce is a 5% chance of attending the middle school versus a 50% chance of attending the bad school. Uh, so with this example, students have to have very high levels of risk lovingness in order to choose the aggressive strategy over the diversified strategy. And this is something we typically don't think is the case in economics. Now, admissions decisions across schools don't have to be correlated. For example, if you apply to charter schools in New York, each school has their own separate lottery that decides who is accepted. In this slide, you can see an example of such a market, which is very similar to the previous example. So we kept the same schools and the same threshold, only that the threshold for school B was changed from 45 and 90. And now each school has their own independent and uniformly drawn number uh, determined, that determines priority. The reason we changed the cutoff of school B is that the result is that the distribution over outcomes from the aggressive strategy and from the diversified strategy is exactly the same as in the previous example. So if I apply using the diversified strategy, I'm still guaranteed to get into the bad school and still in half the cases, I'm accepted to the good school. So it's 50-50. And if I apply using the aggressive strategy, in half the cases I get into the good school, in 10% of the cases, I get in the, into the middle school, but half of the time when, I'm get, when I get into the middle school, I also get into the good school. So in the end of the day, only 5% of the time I attend the middle school. So the distribution of our outcomes from these two strategies is identical. And this means that 
uh, any model of choice uh, that has the IIA property, the independent of irrelevant alternatives, rules out the possibility that an applicant chooses in one scenario the aggressive strategy and in the other scenario the diversified strategy. In this project, project we conducted a laboratory experiment with incentivized pairs of scenarios just like the ones we just saw. And what we find is that agents' choices across uh, pairs of scenarios systematically vary. Specifically, what we see is that when chances are correlated, safety options are typically neglected or applicants apply more aggressively when admission chances are correlated. And this holds both within and between subjects. Now, I already hinted that it looks like the aggressive strategy is analytically unwise. Uh, in the rest of this talk, I'll try to convince you that indeed choices under correlation are the ones you want to suspect as unwise or unintentional. Now, the two scenarios I presented in the early slides may seem simplistic or removed from reality. I want to highlight that, in fact, they closely mirror the situations in many national matches or citywide matches. In the paper, we review the college admission in the United Kingdom, as well as high school admissions in Ghana and in Kenya. Uh, but I'm sure many of you are familiar with many other scenarios that are quite similar. Just to give you an idea, the UK college admission process <clears throat> works as follows. If you're a high school student, what you're going to do is to send your dossier to about five college programs, at which point they will respond with a contingent offer. So they'll tell you how much you need to score in your A-levels in order to get into the college. At that point, you need to submit to the centralized mechanism a rank order list consisting of only two college programs, your firm choice, the school you're going to attend if you pass the threshold of that school, and your insurance choice. This will kick in if you fail to meet the threshold of your firm choice, but you still uh, score high enough to get into your insurance choice. Now, if you're familiar with my work and Alex's work in behavioral market design, it probably wouldn't shock you that some people don't get it right. In fact, what we find is that more than a third of subjects in the United Kingdom college admission choose a safety option that is more selective than their firm choice. In other words, their safety option has zero probability to be realized. And this holds in the other data set we'll look at as well. Uh, so just to summarize key features of uh, these uh, setups, we have a small set of applications being sent. These applications are being sent before you learn your test results. These test results introduce correlation in admission decisions across all schools. And we find some evidence that people don't make the right decisions. And it looks like correlation in invo is involved specifically we see second choices or insurance choices that are more selective than the first, the first choices. The theory component of this paper builds upon a search framework that I presented here last year. Uh, using this framework, we find that a <clears throat> correlation neglectful subjects are too optimistic about the expected utility they're going to derive from uh, any portfolio. The intuition is basically that these subjects don't understand that the event in which they're accepted to Harvard and the event in which they're accepted to MIT uh, basically overlap. Uh, and as a result, they double count these, uh, these probabilities in spite of them being just sort of one event when, where they score really high. Uh, this means that these supplicants are highly likely to be disappointed. Uh, maybe more importantly, we find a comparative study that is sharp over behavior. We find that correlation neglectful subjects apply more aggressively than sophisticated subjects 
and thus they're more likely to end up being unassigned. Uh, this, of course, has payoff implications and we derive sort of uh, uh, worst case scenarios and lower bounds on, on how bad uh, the situation may be. And it can be pretty bad. So it could be that the portfolio of size K yields the same utility as a portfolio of size one. Uh, now, I'm not going to show you any proofs today, but for those who remember my talk last year, which apparently ACM uploaded to YouTube and the link is below, uh, you can get intuition from this figure. So this figure basically shows how uh, optimal portfolios look when admissions are perfectly independent, uncorrelated, and when they are perfectly aligned. They use only one single uh, exam score that you don't know. And basically what we find is that when admissions are correlated, portfolios expand both upward and downward towards safer options. But when admissions are independent, you only add more selective options to your portfolio as it grows. Now, how, how does this relate to, to this project? Well, if you're correlation neglectful, you live in a world where you perceive admission chances to be independent. Now, when you choose your optimal single application, perception of correlation between schools' admissions decisions is irrelevant. So the optimal size one portfolio is the same regardless of your perceptions of correlation. But then when you choose larger portfolio, people who believe admissions are uncorrelated behave like the left-hand slide. So they choose only more selective options, while people that understand that admissions are correlated add to their portfolio also safer options, they expand downward, and as a result, they're more likely to end up being assigned. <clears throat> so I want to proceed and go to the experiment. Uh, the experiment was conducted in Penn State in the Lima lab. Uh, after giving informed consent, subjects was, were randomized into one of two experimental arms, where the experimental arms only differed in terms of the order that they saw certain treatments. Specifically, 85 subjects were, correlate, were randomized to the arm in which they saw first nine uncorrelated scenarios. And after that, they saw the nine matched uh, correlated scenarios. And 80 subjects first saw the correlated scenarios and then the nine uncorrelated scenarios. This allowed us to make between subject comparisons. So comparing the behavior in the first nine rounds between the two arms, and also within subject comparisons, looking at this particular subject and comparing how this particular experimental subject behaves uh, under correlation and when admission chances are uncorrelated. After this uh, <clears throat> stage, all subjects had to complete some other tasks, lottery choices, Raven matrices, and a replication of the NK and Zimmerman experiment, and I'll elaborate on these things when, when it will be relevant. At this point, I just want to highlight that everything we did was pre-registered and all the analysis followed our pre-registered plan with a single exception that I will flag when we get there. Uh, so the, the school choice scenarios were very much like the example we've seen at the beginning. Here on this slide, you can see the leading example, the example we showed at the beginning where the slashes represents cutoffs we had to change so that the uncorrelated and the correlated scenarios have the same distribution over outcomes when I choose the aggressive and the diversified uh, strategy. Except for this baseline scenario, we included some other scenarios, uh, some that made the safety option uncertain, some that made the aggressive strategy uh, reasonable for risk neutral uh, subjects. So generally you need to be risk loving to want to choose the aggressive strategy. Uh, we had a scenario that the middle school is more selective than the good school. Uh, this makes the aggressive strategy completely dominated. And some scenarios that introduce a uh, rationale to choose the third application strategy that we're not very interested in uh, of applying to the middle and the bad school. <clears throat> Here you can see the aggregate distribution over choices. The upper bar 
shows that when admission chances are correlated, about 36% of the choices correspond to the diversified strategy and 43% correspond to the aggressive strategy. The lower bar paints a different picture. We see that when admission chances are not correlated, the uh, fraction of diversified strategies nearly doubles and the fraction of aggressive strategies is nearly half. And if you look within subjects, you see very similar results. So out of the about 25% of the rounds where we saw violation of IIA, namely where the subject chose the aggressive strategy in one frame and the diversified strategy in the other frame, uh, more than uh, or something like 80, 85% of the cases correspond to a choice of the aggressive strategy under correlation and the diversified strategy under uh, independence. And you may think there is some heterogeneity going on, but we actually find very, very similar result if we look at each scenario separately. Now, at this point, you may be convinced that the frame is affecting the choices and you might not be convinced that the mistake is happening um, when the admission chances are correlated. So I want to tell you now about the elicitations in the end of the experiment that address exactly that. So the first thing we did is just ask subjects directly, do you prefer this distribution or that distribution? Uh, and you can see at the bottom of the slide how subjects experience this question. Uh, and what we find is that subjects choose consistently with the reported preferences in this transparent domain, much more when admission chances are uncorrelated. This is the 66.9 in the lower bar and way less frequently they choose inconsistently with their uh, report in the lottery choice. Finally, we replicated the experiment of NK and Zimmerman. Uh, to be brief, what these guys do is try to measure how neglectful subjects are by sending to them multiple copies of the same information and see how well subjects account for this multiplicity. The result of their experiment is a parameter between zero and one, where zero types are fully sophisticated and types with one are fully neglectful. Unfortunately, and this is where we deviated from our pre-registered plan, we fail to account that some subjects in our experiment, as well as in their experiment, get values that are higher than one or lower than zero. So we dropped these subjects and continued according to our plan. And what we find here in this kernel regression is that more uh, neglectful types are the ones that make more uh, anomalous, that present more anomalous behavior in our experiment. This is a kernel regression. Here you can see the same thing. Uh, in a linear regression with and with a lot of, uh, without controls and with many controls for ability, including uh, Raven matrices and uh, performance in school. So just to summarize, we, find, we ran an experiment with multiple scenarios where we find the students' application decisions suffer under correlation. Unfortunately, correlation is a thing in reality and there are good reasons that it will persist which means that there is a big role for behavioral economics in market design. Uh, you can see some uh, of the points at the bottom of the slide. Thank you.